Alright, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss further into integrals and work and now go over example two of the example series and look at an example that uses Hooke's law. I'll also introduce Hooke's law right now before I get to the example. And basically the following example requires using a law from physics called Hooke's law, which states that uh, the force required to maintain a spring stretched x units beyond its natural length, so we're dealing with natural length, is proportional to x. So f of x equals k times x, where k is just a positive constant called the spring constant. And this was um, uh, this law was first brought up by Hooke. Uh, I think I think that's why. Yeah, that's why it's called after him. Anyways, uh, Hooke's law holds provided that x is not too large. So if you have a spring, something looks like, let's say you have a surface here and you have something connected to it like this. And here is a uh, spring like that. And assuming that there's no friction anywhere, you know, I'll put that note right here. Just assuming there's no friction like air, air resistance or ground friction or anything. Uh, just an ideal scenario. So you have this where that's a spring. This is here. And at this point here, this is where it's, we'll call this the x equals to zero uh, position right here. And, yeah, and where this is just the natural position of the spring. Yeah, so that it's not pulling it with any force. So there's, there's no force being applied on it. But now once you start stretching it, yeah, when you start stretching it like this, so basically it starts stretching beyond its natural position right there. So if this was the natural position here, now we have a new position x. And the force required to push it at this point, is, it's always going to be f of x equals 2 k, that constant, times by the x, the distance from its natural zero position. And I'll just put that here. So this is part b, where it just stretch position of string. So the force to move it from its natural length is always going to be proportional to x, where that's the constant k. Yeah, that's where k comes in right here. So yeah, for different uh, springs, some are more stiff, etc. And this again holds when the x is not too large. If you start stretching it if you start stretching it way beyond, then the force actually increases even more to pull it. If you ever try push it, uh, pulling a spring, you'll notice it's easier initially, but once you get really, really far up, it's just really, really hard. So, yeah, now we'll go over uh, basically an example using this Hooke's law, and it's this one here. A force of uh, 40 newtons is required to hold a spring that has been stretched from its natural length of 10 centimeters to a new length of 15 centimeters. Now the question asks, how much work is done in stretching the spring from this already stretched 15 centimeter position to even further to 18 centimeters? Now, now to do this, uh, we first have to solve for what the k constant is, is or the um, the spring constant. And to that, to do that, let's just draw what we know. So if we were to let's just draw here, this is the spring up to this point right here. And this this is the stretched point, which is 15 centimeters. But its unstretched point, or its natural length, is actually supposed to be over here at 10 centimeters. So this point right here is going to be our x equals to 0 point, our starting point. And now this is our stretched uh, position right here. And at this point right here is going to be, well, x equals to 15 minus 10 which equals to 5 centimeters right here. And uh, yeah, basically, so now the force is, uh, or the force acting on it is going to be, well, f of x, which equals to k, or constant times by x, and the x starts from here. So there is our x-axis starts starting here, where the initial length is 10 centimeters. So now we could solve for this, this k because we were given that uh, stretching from 10 to 15 is 40 newtons. So we know that force uh, equals 2k times by, by x. And we know that 40 newtons, basically this equals 2 now k times by this distance 5 centimeters. And 5 centimeters in meters, because that's a standard unit, so we'll convert it, is going to be 0 0.05 meters. And so, or equals to, well, k equals to 5 over, well, 100 
and this is in new units of meters right here yeah so this is just to make it easier to uh, calculate what k is so now when we solve for k just rearrange this we'll get basically 40 uh, times it by 100 move it over divided by 5 and again the units uh, here yeah, are going to be because we're dividing by uh, this is a meter dividing by it so it's going to be 1 over meter and this is a newton on top so this uh, 100 divided by 5 that's just 20 so we'll get 40 uh, newtons yeah, so 40 newtons times by 20 up top and it's going to be well over uh, units of meters right here and divided by meters so 20 times 40 now that's just 800 and the units for this is just newton divided by meter so that's our k constant so now we have our force or f of x equals to 800 times it by well x right here where the units of this 800 are just newton over meter and when you multiply by meter you just get to newton's force so this is our function so now we could use this function to find the work required of going from uh, 15 centimeters so going from x equals to uh, 15 centimeters or actually no this is uh, point zero or five actually x equals five centimeters to x equals eight centimeters again because we're subtracting from our initial length of 10 centimeters so this is at 15 centimeter length and this is our x equal eight centimeters that is our 18 centimeter length so now uh, we could use the integral now to solve for the amount of work. So work equals to basically moving now from uh, point zero 0.05, and this is in terms of meters, to point zero 0.08 meters. So this is our x equals to, well, that's centimeters. Now this is meters, just for standard units. So now this is our f of x. This is the force applied at, any, at every point. And the area under the force curve is going to be, well, our work, our total work. Because it's changing, we need to do summation over every point using integrals, like I explained in my earlier video on air integrals and, wor and work. So now we have this function right here. So 0 0.05, 0 0.08. Plug this 800 in for f of x. Times it by x dx. This equals to... Now take the integral, actually, yeah, this is the, never mind here. Take the integral of this, that's going to be 800x squared divided by 2. And this is from, yeah, from 0 0.05 to 0 0.08. So this equals 2, well, this 800 divided by 2 is 400. So 400, now we could take that out, the, which is a constant. Now plug these in, so we get 0 0.08 squared minus 0 0.05 squared, etc. So now if we plug this into a calculator, you will get 1.56. And the unit for this one is going to be, well, our Newton times meter. Because that, yeah, because we have force times, this is a displacement or distance, that's going to be Newton meter, and this equals to, well, joules, so 1.56 joules which is a unit of energy and that is how much work is required to move the spring when it's already has been stretched to 15 but now stretching it to a new 18 centimeter length anyways that's all for today if we learned from this video i just wanted to illustrate using hook's law as well as always making sure that you're starting your x-axis from the uh, natural length where the force is actually zero where it's not where there's no force being applied to it, and that's its natural length. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this video, and thanks for watching. And also, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And anyways, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy.